So, you've finally gone and done it. You went out and bought your first Gunpla model kit. You unsealed the box, pulled the runners out of their packaging, and put it together while Let's Play videos droned out of your laptop's awful speakers in the background. It's still got some nub marks that you missed and the panel lining isn't all that great, but you don't care. It's yours. You made this. And it's those imperfections that'll make it unique to you and you alone. Will you do better next time? Sure you will. But right now, none of that matters because damn it, you built a gunpla. And now the time has come to show it off to the world. You cover the computer monitor on your desk with a bed sheet long overdue for a wash. Spend 30 minutes articulating it just so. Another 10 taking pictures with your phone in its far too small, far too bright flash. And exactly 43 minutes later, you're ready to post the fruits of your labor to the internet for the world to see. Except for when you step back and actually look at your kit, you find that it looks about as graceful as a St. Bernard, who recently had his water dish replaced with a bottle of absinthe. And that's why for this installment of How Gunpla, we're going to talk a little bit about posing. Because whether you want it to look good on your shelf or you're looking for some internet-based gratification, how you pose your final product is crucial to the overall quality of your model. No matter how well you put it together, if it's not going to stay up after it's all said and done, then how good really is it? So we're going to need something that's a little bit easier to pose and can stand a little more naturally than our fallen friend over here. So I brought along this. The Real Grade Orb Union MBF-P02 Gundam Astray. Red Frame. Developed using stolen technology from the Earth Alliance's G Project, the suit features more lightweight armor than its legitimate G Project counterparts, leading to dramatically increased speed and agility. What it loses in defense it more than makes up for in firepower, with two head-mounted 75mm multi-barrel CIWSs, two back-mounted beam savers, a Type 71 beam rifle, and an shield. So really, it's just a specialized loadout of armaments from any Cosmic Era timeline suit, with one notable exception. This giant, gently curving exception is a katana, known as the Gerbera Strait. This chrome destroyer of worlds is described as extremely sharp not relying on brute force like many other non-energy sword weapons to rend an enemy through to the hilt. There's even a version that, if the mobile suit were configured to handle it, would be to scale a positively titanic 150 meters long. That's only 8 meters shorter than the Chicago Mercantile Exchange Center in Chicago, the city's 87th tallest building. It's also unapologetically low-tech, has a gold hilt, and is a gigantic katana. Another thing that this kit has going for it, aside from it being positively gorgeous and genuinely fun to put together, is that it's very, very poseable. Many of the real great kits from the last couple years are, but this kit is so flexible thanks to its complex inner frame that it practically feels like molding clay in some places. This also lends itself well to many different minor pose adjustments, and as you'll see in this video, it's these minor adjustments that can make all the difference. So, where to begin when posing? Well, many builders will tell you to start by mimicking the pose on the box. There we go. So, obviously, we're going to need more inspiration than the box for this. Luckily, there are many sites that feature stock imagery and reference work. Now, I'm not going to Google Gundam poses for you, and quite frankly, neither should you. Because you'll more than likely come up with something like this, which is the end result of an uninterested Barnes & Noble stock boy. Instead, don't think so much about referencing a model of a Gundam. Instead, consider referencing a model... human. Gundams are humanoid machines. They have arms, legs, torsos, heads, just like most of us do. 
Something that can make your model more appealing to look at is treating its poses like you're mimicking a human. Like, for example, this human, who looks to be in a rather bad mood. Observe the curvature of his torso to start. The gentle movement leads your eye to the rest of the frame and creates a striking contrast to the rigidity of his left forearm, sharply sloping down to meet the handle of the blade. This evokes a defensive stance as the theoretical denim-clad warrior prepares for his next strike. This is further emphasized by more leading lines in the legs, which the curvature of the model's torso leads the movement of the image toward. As we move from left to right in the image, you'll notice that the leading lines slope less and less, eventually leading you to the dead level katana itself. With no motion at all, you see that the model has backed off from an attack, primed himself for his counter, and is ready to make like the Empire and strike back. Now, it's time to evoke the same motion in the Gunpla. Break the model down to its basic parts, like we discussed earlier. You can try to do this mentally if you'd like, but you can also physically do so by pulling the major pieces out of their joints, which is what I prefer to do for this sort of articulation. However, not all kits like coming apart so easily, as you can clearly see. That's not necessarily a bad thing, that means it's going to stay together easier once you've finished posing it in the way that you want it to be posed. For the sake of this video, however, I'm going to be explaining my posing techniques as if you're able to take apart the individual pieces and work on them separately. Let's start with the upper and lower torso. The gentle bend that we saw earlier in our model's torso can be emulated by articulating the two pieces to kink to the left ever so slightly. Now be careful here. Unlike our reference model, our gunplut does not have muscles that can constantly adjust or apply pressure in order to stay upright. Too much movement in one direction or another can make the model unstable, and we're going to need to correct some of this anyways with widening his stance later on. Next, we can do the most difficult part of this model, the arms and hands. Let's start with the right arm. It'll be jutting up vertically and slightly slanted at the forearm, but as you can see with our salty friend up here in the corner, the hands will be on the handle in order to thrust the blade into its enemy. So we want to take this into account when positioning the upper arm and shoulder. Next, the left arm. This arm will be less at a vertical angle than the first one in order to keep the leading lines we saw before. This also allows it to adhere to something called the golden spiral, but we'll talk about that more in a future video. Next, we'll articulate each leg separately and then place them back onto the model. Remember, too much movement in one direction or another can cause pieces to snap off or worse. Get a feel for your model and only move it where it's comfortable with moving. Finally, we have the hands. Because of their size, it can be easier to articulate hands whenever they're disconnected from their arm sockets. Once you're happy with the placement of the hands, just snap them back in Make sure everything is balanced. Balance everything again. And there we are. We now have a perfectly-ish articulated model kit. Ready and waiting for you to take mediocre Instagram photos and attempt to earn fake internet points in the forms of likes and upvotes. Later, we'll talk about how to make those pictures less insufferable with a lot less time and money than you might think. But for now, keep building bad gunpla. Take care.